Welcome to the cool town of Labadee, Missouri, and unfortunately I don't have time to tell you many of the cool things about it, like how it seemingly went from commercially abandoned to a cozy tourist spot in the last many years, or that the street is so wide like this because five sets of railroad tracks once went through here. I certainly can't even spare a few seconds to let you know those rail lines were bypassed in favor of bridges, like the one over Highway T, with an opening so narrow, traffic under it had to be controlled by a permanent cycling stoplight. And even that infrastructure has been updated and replaced. And that's because the focus of this little video is this train station building from the 19th century. But first, let's get some semantical worries of disclosure out of the way that some folks might inevitably express. This video is not sponsored, I have no connections to these particular people or their business, and I don't even remember their names, which they shouldn't be offended over because that's normal for me. I don't live here or know anyone else in town, etc, etc. More insight and drivel on why I would make a film like this then can be found toward the end of it, but for now it's far more important to tell you the snippets of story I got about the history of the building. Presumably, it became obsolete as a train station after World War II, and that's why some folks named Schultz, relation to Charles Unknown, turned it into a grocery in the 1940s. Legend has it this lasted until about 1978 when the couple retired, and they simply locked and boarded it up with everything inside, walked across the street to their home, and never touched it again for the remaining decade or so they lived afterward. We have 12-foot skeleton and a 12-foot pumpkin head inferno. It was in the late 1980s when some new owner of the property cleared it all out, including some smoked hams left on the shelf that surely were cooked while smoking the bandit was still playing in theaters, and I imagine could only be identified as hams at one time through rigorous laboratory testing. This is the third owner iteration antique store to be here, and the current owners were pleasant and accommodating to my filming request, quickly accepting of my curious altruistic desires to promote their store out of the blue without an obvious catch. This video and many others I've made like it are proof of delivery that this is what happens when I come calling from random nowhere unannounced and want to quench a penchant to make one of my sentimental little films. I'm trying to build a catalog of examples and develop a brand of trust among locals and historical communities that can lead to ever-increasing access and opportunity. This is the actual old store sign from the Schultz's Market, an invaluable artifact of this place the current stewards proudly display here on the wall. I'm starting to run out of footage, so before I forget, let me offer some editorial of the store. There is a spectrum and variety of types of antique store, and I'd classify this as a boutique antique store, meaning a mix of actual antiques and new eclectic artisan home decor products. Fortunately, they also sell toys and food items like obscure candy bars, good for bribing restless children and husbands. You're unlikely to find many value finds, but the prices are not obscene, despite the excellent presentation of the store and obviously extensively, if not expensively, restored building. The owners who gave me the great anecdote about the grocery store seem genuinely informed and interested in Labadee history as well as preserving it, as they mentioned plans to restore or repaint some kind of mural on the building something for me to check out when I visit again. I really like places like this and their stories, and want people doing things of this nature to be successful and happy in general. I also want to showcase them to folks through these little videos I enjoy putting together. It is a great well of wholesome subject matter I am happy to cover, as it can encourage an optimistic if not alternative view of the world, and maybe highlight a way to savor one's limited existence of living. In other words, get out there on that beautiful day with someone you love, or at least someone you can reasonably tolerate, and see and feel the grass while you can. 
forget the cost of time and pragmatic use of your discretionary income once in a while and treat yourself to a trinket from a low-stress journey to the Labity station near you or merely enjoy these places vicariously through videos like these. Thank you for watching.